Sony has disclosed its latest plans to further invest in games made by Chinese studios at a recent live-streamed PlayStation event in China. These plans were revealed alongside the announcement that Sony's China Hero Project initiative will be revitalized as part of Sony's efforts to support Chinese developers. The China Hero Project was first revealed in 2017 as a program meant to support Chinese game developers. To date, seven games have launched as part of the program, including Anno Mutationum which launched in March of this year. However, updates on the China Hero Project were hindered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Sony has assured its commitment to the program as well as its embrace of the Chinese video game market by announcing that it will invest at least 1 million yuan, equivalent to roughly $140,000, into each game in the program. This was announced as part of a PlayStation event recently held in Chengdu, China. A major element of this event was to revitalize the China Hero Project with Sony continuing to support games and also publishing titles such as Lost Soul Aside and Convalaria, both set to release on PS4 and PS5. Bao Bo, Sony's director of China game production, affirmed that this latest season of games from the China Hero Project is the largest selection of titles thus far. This is the latest of Sony's efforts to continue to establish itself as a large entity in the Chinese gaming market, other examples of which include securing the popular China-developed game Genshin Impact as a console exclusive ahead of its 2020 release. These efforts have seen success with the PS4 selling over 3.5 million units in the country, with the president of SIE Shanghai, Tatsuo Iguchi, saying that the current aim is to sell twice as many PS5 consoles. Since the console launched in the country in May 2021, roughly 670,000 units have been sold. The game industry has seen a swift embrace of the Chinese, a relatively recent phenomenon as game consoles were illegal in the country until 2014 with games being released in the country being subject to governmental approval. These restrictions have not stopped console manufacturers from establishing themselves as major players in the Chinese market with the current leader being the Nintendo Switch. This is before factoring in the influence of Chinese tech companies such as Tencent and ByteDance, both of which have found success in Western markets. Sony is not backing down from its efforts to support the country's gaming market. Time will tell how these efforts turn out. Lost Soul aside is looking real good, and I have been interested since it's showing six years ago. Hopefully the game doesn't fall under any scrutiny or development hell. Speaking of PlayStation's partnerships, former Sony exec confirms that PlayStation contributed significantly to the development of the upcoming horror title The Callisto Protocol. It has been revealed that The Callisto Protocol, an upcoming sci-fi survival horror game from new developer Striking Distance Studios, received contributions in its development from PlayStation and its parent company, Sony. The Callisto Protocol has generated significant hype online since its announcement, in large part due to the incredible graphics and animation on display in the trailers shown thus far. Directed by Glenn Schofield, co-creator of the iconic Dead Space series, the Callisto Protocol has frequently been described as a spiritual successor to those games due to similarities in setting, aesthetic, and gameplay elements. Schofield has stated in interviews that there is no connection between the fictional universes of Dead Space and the Callisto Protocol. Although a great deal of creative influence from the former has clearly found its way into the new IP. One of the evident similarities lies in the gruesome, gory imagery employed in both games, although the Callisto Protocol certainly displays a unique and visually stunning style especially in its cinematic scenes. It seems that some of the credit for the impressive quality of these cinematics may be due to a collaboration between Striking Distance Studios and Sony's Visual Arts Services Group, VASG. Responding to a tweet highlighting the fact that the Callisto Protocol rented out PlayStation's motion capture studio space to film its cinematics, former VASG studio head Michael Mumbauer stated on Tuesday that Sony's contributions to the project went even further. According to Mumbauer, PlayStation and the VASG contributed quite a lot to the cinematics and more, suggesting a deeper collaboration with Striking Distance than was previously recognized. The San Diego-based VASG has been offering assistance in the form of resources and expertise to a variety of game development studios for many years and has been called an unsung hero of countless popular PlayStation titles. 
Most of the beneficiaries of VASC's aid are Sony-owned studios, but the company does collaborate with third-party studios like Striking Distance from time to time. For a relatively small and untested studio like Striking Distance, collaborating with influential companies like Sony seems like a smart move. As doing so provides access to facilities and technology far beyond the reach of most developers. It is quite likely that the widely praised cinematics seen from the Callisto Protocol can be attributed at least in part to the success of this collaboration. Although the hardworking team at Striking Distance Studios certainly still deserves the lion's share of the credit. Fans will get to see all of the game's cinematics and more when the Callisto Protocol comes out in a few days. Speaking of the Callisto Protocol, the director of the Callisto Protocol, Glenn Schofield, has said the team is not holding anything back from the game in an attempt to clear up any confusion fans may have had about the season pass. Touted as one of the most anticipated horror games of the year, fans are excited to see what many are considering to be a spiritual follow-up to Dead Space, which Schofield also directed. But even before the game is out, there's already been discussion about some additional content in the future. The game's store pages show there will be a season pass for the Callisto Protocol, which will be available for those who purchase the Digital Deluxe Edition. This extra content will feature story DLC, and new game modes and skins. One thing that has caught people's attention is the addition of 25 new death animations via the season pass. However, some fans have expressed concern that developer Striking Distance Studios is withholding some of this content from the main game in order to release it for the season pass, which has prompted the director to try and clear some things up. Among story DLC, new game modes, skins, and so on is the addition of 25 new death animations as part of the Contagion Bundle and the Riot Bundle. It remains to be seen how this works out exactly. Here is what the season pass includes. In a recent post on Twitter, Schofield has said that nothing is being held back from the main game. In a response to one comment, he felt the need to clarify some information after seeing headlines about the season pass and added that the team had put every freaking thing that was done in the shipping game. Schofield also says the studio has not even started work on the Callisto Protocol DLC content yet. It looks as though Striking Distance will begin this additional work in the new year, with priority going towards the extra deaths that fans have been asking for. There have also been other concerns in the run-up to the game's release. It's been noted that the Callisto Protocol will come bundled with DeNovo, the anti-piracy and anti-tamper DRM software that's proved itself less than popular among gamers. Fans have reported issues with overall game performance on titles that have de novo, such as Resident Evil Village and Deathloop. And some games like Wolfenstein Youngblood and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order have had the unfashionable DRM tech removed after the fact. Speaking of sci-fi horror, a new video game in the Alien franchise is rumored to be in development, reviving hope that Creative Assembly is working on an Alien Isolation sequel. Another AAA Alien game, which some are hoping will be the long-awaited sequel to 2014's Alien Isolation, is rumored to be in development. There have been numerous video games based on the Alien movies released over the years. But Creative Assembly's tension-filled survival horror game raised the bar to a level that many people feel has not been reached since. There is already another entry in the franchise in development, Alien's Dark Descent by Tindalo's Interactive and Disney's 20th Century Games. While its world premiere reveal trailer in June left many fans feeling optimistic, Dark Descent will be a top-down real-time strategy game and may not hit the same spot for some that a first- or third-person action title would. That's where the rumors of a project codenamed Marathon come in. According to Insider Gaming, anonymous sources have provided documents to support their claim that a new AAA Aliens game is in development for current-gen consoles. Marathon, whose developer is still undisclosed, is expected to be released during the 2023 holiday season and will be a survival horror experience that takes inspiration from the Dead Space and Resident Evil franchises. Other than that, not much is known about the mysterious Alien game. These tidbits can be combined with other confirmed industry information, however, and have led some to the tentative supposition that Project Marathon may be the sequel to Alien Isolation that fans have been clamoring for since 2014. That game's developer, Creative Assembly, clearly states in its Twitter bio that it is working on two new unannounced projects. And indeed, the source who leaked the information about Marathon also said that an Alien, Isolation sequel has either been pitched or is already in development.
However, the wording of the leaks raises the possibility that Marathon and the rumored Alien Isolation sequel are two different beasts. The sources, who provided documentation and even concept art to back their claims, said Marathon is, in development. The status of the Alien Isolation game, on the other hand, seems to have been described with less certainty. Creative Assembly is already known to be working on the team-based multiplayer shooter Hyenas, which is being developed in collaboration with Sega. As for what one of the unannounced games might be, Creative Assembly is primarily known for its extensive list of Total War games. The latest of these, Total War Warhammer 3, came out in February 2022, and the company has consistently released entries in that franchise on a nearly annual basis for the past 10 years. That leaves one unannounced project up in the air, and it seems plausible that it may be another alien game. Fans of the iconic and enigmatic Ghost from the Call of Duty franchise may soon have a chance to learn more about the mysterious British Special Forces operative. As a new leak indicates that Infinity Ward may be working on a Ghost-focused campaign. The intimidating operator has appeared in multiple entries in the franchise, including appearing as a multiplayer skin in the underrated Call of Duty Ghosts. And has become one of the most recognizable characters from the Call of Duty series. Making his first appearance as an NPC in 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the character of Simon, Ghost, Riley quickly gained a following among Call of Duty players due to his trademark, skull-shaped mask and his no-nonsense approach to combat. A hit with series fans despite being killed off at the end of Modern Warfare 2. Ghost has appeared in multiple entries in the franchise and was even a playable character in the mobile game Call of Duty Heroes. Gamers' interest in the deadly and efficient operator reached new heights early this month when a leak revealed Ghost's face, or at least the face of the model under the mask. In a new story posted on What If Gaming, writer Ralph Valve, who has a reputation for revealing accurate Call of Duty leaks, has stated that Infinity Ward may be working on a Ghost-focused campaign. Valve claims that an associate at Infinity Ward told him that developers there had approached Ghost actor, Samuel Rookin, with a proposal for developing his character beyond the boxed release. While these conversations, if they occurred, don't serve as definitive proof that a ghost-focused game is in the works. They certainly seem to indicate that gamers haven't seen the last of the iconic operator. While discussing the supposed leak, Valve clarifies that it is still unclear what form, if any, a ghost spin-off would take. With a new, full premium release, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 expansion supposedly in the works at Infinity Ward, expected to release sometime in 2023, it's possible that Ghost could play a central role in that story. Featuring Ghost as one of the main characters in future DLC would fit with another leak mentioned in the story, which states that the 2023 expansion will take a closer look at some of the series' iconic characters. With his intimidating skull mask and now being one of the most recognizable pieces of Call of Duty's iconography, it's no surprise that Infinity Ward may want to let Ghost finally take center stage. BBC Radio 4, which airs current affairs programs as well as covering topics related to film, TV, and music, is adapting Splinter Cell into an audio show, which will be airing soon. There have been numerous video games adapted for TV or the big screen, many of which did not to go down too well, but it's rare that a popular gaming series gets adapted for radio. This also comes at a time when the antics of Sam Fisher are on a lot of people's lips. Ubisoft announced an official Splinter Cell remake not long ago, which will join the ranks of current and upcoming remakes that have been releasing regularly these last few years. Nevertheless, many will be excited to see the return of this beloved stealth franchise. One thing that will be on many minds is whether Michael Ironside will be returning to play the deep-voiced, sardonic protagonist Sam Fisher. It's uncertain, and it looks as though the legendary actor won't be reprising his role for the radio show. BBC Radio 4 is creating an eight-part audio series of Splinter Cell, which will be releasing sometime in December. Called Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Firewall, the program will star Andoni's Anthony as the iconic Fisher. Anthony has done voice work for Assassin's Creed Origins and has starred in a few episodes of the hit UK soap opera Coronation Street. They've also done some radio work for The Archers, another popular BBC radio for show that's been airing for more than 70 years. Firewall will tell the story of a new generation of operatives being recruited for the National Security Agency's Covert Action Division. On top of the adaptation and upcoming remake, Splinter Cell celebrated its 20th anniversary recently, with the first entry launching November 17, 2002. Since that maiden release, the franchise made a name for itself in the stealth genre, 
being compared to other successful series like Metal Gear Solid and Hitman. While later installments didn't live up to the standard of the classic games, the fact that Splinter Cell is coming back in a number of ways will be exciting for many. It's unfortunate that Ironside isn't voicing Sam Fisher in the radio show, and it's unknown whether he will return for the remake, but now seems like a good time to be a Splinter Cell fan. It's regarded as one of the best stealth action series in all of gaming and a lot of people had hoped that 2013's Blacklist wouldn't be the last they'd see of the fourth echelon spy. IDOS Montreal may be working with Xbox on a new Fable title according to information revealed following the closure of developer Onoma. Formerly Square Enix Montreal, Onoma was acquired by Swedish holding company Embracer Group earlier this year. Given IDOS Montreal's strong track record for delivering titles with solid storytelling and gameplay mechanics, this could be good news for fans of the Fable franchise. Onoma was originally founded as Square Enix Montreal in 2011 and was the primary development studio behind mobile games based on Square Enix properties. Most well known for their turn-based, tactical take on classic franchises with popular games like Hitman Go and Lara Croft Go. The studio was acquired by Embracer Group in August of 2022 along with Crystal Dynamics and IDOS Montreal. IDOS Montreal, now rumored to be working on a new Fable title, is the studio behind critically acclaimed releases such as Deus Ex Human Revolution and the recent Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. In an article posted by Bloomberg, it was announced that Embracer Group will be shutting down Onoma, with some staff members being informed that they would be transferred to IDOS Montreal. Onoma was one of many recent purchases by Embracer Group, with other high-profile acquisitions including other game development studios and the rights to the Lord of the Rings IP. While discussing the cost-cutting strategies behind the Onoma's closure, the Bloomberg article notes that IDOS Montreal is working with Microsoft on several games, including one in the Fable franchise. The news that IDOS Montreal may be working on a new Fable title, follows on the heels of an announcement that Horizon Forbidden West's senior writer is joining Fable's development team. Currently in development by Playground Games, the upcoming reimagining of the long-running series is expected to use the same engine as the developer's gorgeous 2021 racing game, Forza Horizon 5. The Fable franchise experienced a bit of a slump after 2010's Fable 3 was met with lukewarm reception by most of the gamers. So this infusion of new talent to the franchise could bode well for the series' future. It remains to be seen whether the Onoma developers who were transferred to IDOS Montreal will be working on the next mainline entry in the Fable franchise or another project using the IP. But the fact that Microsoft reportedly has such a well-regarded studio working on Fable projects shows that they still have faith in the franchise. While Embracer Group has had a somewhat spotty track record with recent releases, most clearly seen in the failure of the Saints Row reboot, their recent reshuffling of some of the biggest studios in gaming shows that the company, for better or for worse, seems set to have an outsized influence on the industry for years to come. But on the flip side, there is another thing to be considered. Xbox is already hiring Crystal Dynamics to work on Perfect Dark, because of the incompetence of the initiative and massive leaving of talent. The same thing could be said for Fable, as earlier in the year it was reported that Playground Games is struggling to work on an RPG, so they needed additional help. Xbox still needs to prove to gamers by producing high-quality AAA games consistently, and we have to wait and see how the final product turns out. Speaking of IDOS Montreal, it's been rumored that IDOS Montreal is working on a new entry in the Deus Ex series, with the project currently in very, very early development. Considered to be one of the greatest stealth franchises in all of gaming, many have pined the fact that there hasn't been a new installment since 2016's Mankind Divided. So the possibility of seeing the return of Adam Jensen, or perhaps a new character entirely, is something fans will be excited about. There have been rumors about a follow-up to the most recent Deus Ex in the past, which were denied by actor Elias Tufexis, who voices Jensen. The series itself has been around since 2000, with the first entry going down as a landmark release in the sci-fi RPG genre. The franchise was revived in 2011 for Human Revolution, which came out eight years after 2003's Invisible War. Now, with speculations of a new game being bandied around, there may be another chance for fans to jump into the cyberpunk dystopian world. The rumors come from Bloomberg journalist Jason Schreier, who took to Twitter recently to say that IDOS Montreal remains intact, with the studio allegedly working on a number of projects.
He goes on to say that a new Deus Ex installment is one of said projects, adding that it's in the early stages of development. However, no further details have been given about the game. It's also said that IDOS is working on a new IP, as well as partnering with Xbox on what is rumored to be a new fable. However, the developer has not confirmed whether any of this is true, though Schreier is known for having reliable sources in the gaming industry. With narratives that typically revolve around global conspiracies, the series is on par with other contemporary stealth games like Metal Gear, Splinter Cell and Hitman. The former in the midst of getting an official remake, while the latter has been doing remarkably well since being rebooted in 2016. As mentioned, Mankind Divided was the last Deus Ex game, which was well received by fans and critics alike, though it wasn't without its low points. It would be a shame, therefore, if IDOS Montreal didn't consider making a new entry as the series was beginning to take off once again after a bit of a hiatus in the early 2000s. Netflix just announced that it is creating a new live-action feature film and an adult animated series based on Gears of War. The recent announcement came on November 7th, marking Gears of War's 16th anniversary. Microsoft Game Studio and Epic Games released Gears of War as an Xbox exclusive in 2006. The third-person cover shooter saw an overwhelmingly positive reception from Gamer. Gears of War went on to win multiple awards and spawned four sequels, two prequels, including 2020's turn-based tactics game Gears Tactics, and multiple books and comics. Even though Gears 4 and 5 fell short in stature compared to what the trilogy has achieved. Netflix announced its upcoming Gears of War film and animated series over Twitter. Unfortunately, the streaming service didn't say much more beyond that and has not revealed a release window for either project. However, Netflix's tweet did confirm that the film will release first, with the animated series coming later. It's also unclear whether the movie and show will tell a continuous story or are separate projects. The plot is also an unknown, and previously proposed Gears of War films were not set to be direct adaptations. New Line Cinema purchased the rights to a Gears of War film all the way back in 2007, and it would have served as a prequel to the original game. However, it underwent multiple rewrites before the studio quietly dropped the project. Universal Pictures announced a new version in 2016, though that Gears of War movie would have taken place in an alternate universe disconnected from the world of the games. It's unclear if the Netflix film has any connection to either project. Gears of War fans had a mixed but generally positive reaction to Netflix's announcement. Some expressed concerns about whether or not the film and series will stay faithful to the source material or were worried that Netflix would ruin the series for one reason or another. Meanwhile, different commenters pointed to the success of shows like The Witcher, The Cuphead Show, Castlevania, and the recent cyberpunk Edge Runners as arguments in favor of the Netflix adaptation. Many fans also had suggestions about casting choices. Former WWE wrestler Dave Bautista seems to be the popular choice for Gears of War's Marcus Phoenix. As an actor, he's best known for portraying Drax the Destroyer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Bautista's other major supporting roles include but are not limited to the 2017 James Bond film Spectre, 2017's Blade Runner 2049, and the 2021 version of Dune. Other casting suggestions include casting Ryan Reynolds as Baird and Lester Spate reprising his role as Cole. But I don't think he's a great actor and a fit for Marcus Phoenix. CD Projekt Red's The Witcher remake has been revealed to be an open-world role-playing game, a significant deviation from the original title. Speculation has been rife regarding the intricacies of the upcoming remake, but a recent earnings presentation offered some more detail about what players can expect in the modern reimagining of The Witcher. In early October, the Polish publisher and developer announced several projects at various stages of development, one of which was codenamed Canis Majoris. This was later revealed to be a remake of The Witcher, the first entry into the now-renowned franchise that arrived in 2007. Unlike Assassins of Kings and Wild Hunt, the second and third from the trilogy respectively, the original Witcher game has aged quite poorly, and many consider a remake to be justified. However, Whereas the most recent The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt took the game in an open-world direction, the first title was most certainly not. Albeit non-linear, both the first and second Witcher games only provided sandboxes significantly smaller than the vast plains offered by the third. CD Projekt Red's Q3 earnings were recently published and The Witcher remake was described as a story-driven, single-player open-world RPG. 
as well as a modern reimagining of 2007's The Witcher. The confirmation means that The Witcher remake can expect drastic changes relative to the original, and not only because of an entirely new graphics engine. The Witcher was narratively married to distinct regions that progressed one after the other, so much of the progression present will likely require a substantial revamp. Other details are light, but it has been stated the project is being outsourced to Polish studio Fool's Theory alongside veterans of the franchise, with complete oversight from CD Projekt Red. Although Unreal Engine 5 is due to be utilized, the project is still very early in development, and gamers should not expect significant updates, never mind a release date, for a while. If you want to know more about The Witcher Remake, check out this video. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt gets a new trailer showing off all the new features coming to the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S versions of the game. The Witcher 3 launched to critical acclaim in 2015, and many players consider it to be one of the best open-world games of the previous generation. CD Projekt Red had announced that The Witcher 3 will get a free next-generation upgrade for owners of the base game. The video almost works like a story trailer for the game, as it introduces various plot threads from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and its expansions. This is followed by small glimpses of footage from Geralt's adventures, before highlighting the key upgrades present in this version. The trailer confirms that The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will have support for a 60fps mode, ray tracing features, and 4K textures. The next-gen version of The Witcher 3 comes with a photo mode and support for cloud saves. It also mentions that the gameplay will see improvements, although the details of the enhancements are not shared in the trailer. The video mainly focuses on the story of Geralt and Ciri, and the various characters they meet in the game. The upgraded version of The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt looks beautiful, but a side-by-side -side comparison would probably do a better job of highlighting the differences. It looks like The Witcher 3 will come with two modes, offering gamers a choice between 4K visuals and 60fps gameplay. The Witcher 3 on PS4 and Xbox One also suffered from extremely long loading times, so fans can expect to see improvements in this area due to the SSDs present in the PS5. Shortly after the next-gen Witcher 3 Wild Hunt trailer went live, CDPR Global Community Director Marcin Moment outlined some of the features coming to the game. First, it doesn't matter what version of The Witcher 3 someone has, they're getting this upgrade. This applies to the Vanilla Edition, the Complete Edition, and the Game of the Year Edition. Anyone hoping it was a separate game for extra achievements should know that it's not the case, it applies directly to the existing version of the game someone already has. It'll also introduce new features like Photo Mode, Cross Save, Options for Subtitles, and new Camera Options for Exploration, Combat, and Writing. It'll also feature a new Ultra Plus setting on PC, as well as Performance and Ray Tracing modes on consoles. Specifically, performance will prioritize a 60fps, while quality focuses on graphics and adds ray tracing features at 30fps. Moment also notes that patch notes for the game will arrive closer to release, and a physical release of this improved Witcher 3 is coming later on. The one thing fans should know is that these next-gen upgrades only improve existing content and add important features that improve said content. There is no new content included in this upgrade. For example, Someone asked about new Gwent cards for The Witcher 3, which Moment said wouldn't happen as the minigame is perfect as is. And it was clear that The Witcher 3's DLC were not becoming free. Cutscenes were adjusted to no longer have clones of NPCs, an issue shown to have been present in earlier versions of the game. These refined NPCs were also shown to have updated facial animations alongside other environmental graphical updates. For a long time, the only way to play The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt above 30 FPS was on PC, since the performance remained locked on consoles. PC players were also the only ones able to enjoy more user-friendly UI elements and a customizable map through The Witcher 3's active modding community. These issues promise to be resolved in the coming update, allowing console players to enjoy hundreds of hours of gameplay with optimal settings and mod integration. There will likely be an influx of new fans coming to these versions thanks to the popular Netflix Witcher adaption. Additional content in the update includes new gear and outfits that resemble characters from the show, and even a new quest to unlock them. A portion of these new players will have held off until the long-awaited upgrade to finally start their adventure as Geralt, so it's important that the game comes in a complete and polished form. Broken quests and dated performance need to be cleaned up to ensure the game capitalizes on its wider series success, in return drawing more eyes onto the show. 
This also needs to be the last major update for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. CD Projekt Red has a long list of projects in the pipeline, including The Witcher 4, a remake of the first Witcher game, and more in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe. It is commendable that the game is still being supported with free updates after all these years, but now is the time for focus to shift toward making sure the future games are as good as can be. The disastrous launch of Cyberpunk 2077, particularly on consoles, is still fresh in the minds of many fans, and the developers' next releases will be under greater scrutiny as a result. CD Projekt Red released its consolidated financial report for the third quarter of the year, revealing that it has recently concluded the best quarter in its history, primarily thanks to Cyberpunk 2077. The Warsaw, Poland-based developer generated the equivalent of $54.3 million in revenue over the three-month period ending September 30th. Its profits amounted to some 40% of that figure, as it ended the quarter approximately $21.85 million in the green. The company's latest RPG had a highly controversial release in late 2020, largely because the version of the game for the last generation consoles suffered from massive performance issues and bugs, leading to fans asking for refunds en masse. That said, the Cyberpunk 2077 refund debacle now seems like ancient history, as CDPR spent the last two years fixing the game across all platforms. The studio consequently managed to win back a lot of consumer goodwill and is currently highly optimistic about its future prospects, citing this record-breaking quarter as just a sign of greater things to come. CDPR released the massive 1.6 Edge Runners update for Cyberpunk 2077 in early September, which concluded its work on the last-gen versions of the game following months of focused efforts that made for a hectic start to the last quarter. While the ongoing influx of content contributed to the game's continued success, Nilaboex pointed to the recent debut of the Cyberpunk Edgerunners Netflix show as the single biggest boost to the game's Q3 2022 sales. The show hit Netflix's top 10 lists in 19 countries shortly following its mid-September release, helping the game surpass 20 million in lifetime sales later in the month. Now that CDPR is done patching the last-gen versions of the game, its core development team has refocused on wrapping up work on Phantom Liberty, the first from free to pay DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, Nilaboex said. The company has yet to attach a firm release date to the expansion, having only said that Phantom Liberty is planned to debut sometime in 2023. CPDR's latest financial report also reveals that the studio still has high hopes for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The company projects that the sales of the seven-year-old game are likely to enjoy a significant boost following the release of The Witcher 3's next-gen version scheduled for mid-December. In the meantime, the sequel to Cyberpunk 2077 is already in pre-production, together with another Witcher trilogy in a brand new RPG series codenamed Hadar, CDPR revealed last month, which you can find the full details in the video. And that's all for the video guys, like and share the video for a greater audience. Comment your thoughts on the topics and donations are always appreciated. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, and until then from SMPV, it's goodbye.